Hello everyone and welcome to another the Ultimate Fighter episode review. This is for season 28, episode 12, 1000 percent and it's the last episode of the season before the live finale tomorrow night. So yeah, we have actually quite a lot to talk about. I think that's why most of the season has felt kind of slow paced because they were just saving it all to cram everything into this last episode, and I'm gonna tell you as much as I can. So first we start off with um with a segment that I called tape, it's they're on the nose of my phone here. But yeah, um basically uh, both fighters watched tape of Macy's last fight, because Macy is one of the fighters in this fight. She she watched it back to mostly see where she went wrong. Uh, they were in their respective locker rooms, they weren't watching it together. Like, first team Whitaker watched it uh, so that Leia could learn so she could fight against Macy a bit better, and they saw that Macy's a lot better at distance, so if if Leia can master that distance and get close, she could have a better chance of winning. And that's what her, her prep was about, which she mostly focused on distance, not as much on her wrestling. Which is where she's got a lot of really, really good skills. But it was mostly focused on her striking and her close-up striking. And she does have two knockouts on her record. So, yeah, it was really, really good that they focused on that. And I quite like that. For Macy, it was stick to what she knew. You know, she admitted to being kind of a perfectionist about it. And it was good that she saw those flaws. And I've always liked that. You know, when a fighter, even if they win a fight, they know what they did wrong in that fight. Even though they won. So... It's very, very important to have that, especially when these fighters are so young. I mean, most of them are younger than I am, so it's very smart for them to have that in mind. Like, I didn't do everything perfectly, so if I watch it back, what could I have done differently to have made it even better, even though I won? I like that mentality, and it's a shame that it's not really seen a lot these days. We then have two sort of uh, different segments that I've sort of put together. So one of them is uh, Calvin Gastelum took his team to the UFC Performance Institute to play some dodgeball. Basically just to relax and have fun. And yeah, it was actually just quite a fun little thing. I don't really know what else to say about it. It was just kind of cool to see that. You know, oh, it would have been great to see like a dodgeball style coaches challenge. Like they had the assistant coaches helping them as well, not the fighters because they get to take time off. That would be amazing. I'd love to see that. I don't think we've had that before. But yeah, um, it was just really, really nice. It was fun seeing Calvin getting belted with balls and him like sort of complaining. But him acting like a kid, you know? I mean... It was just really kind of cool seeing that. And the part after that is one I have called Pads. I'm looking like constantly at my phone for the notes. Um, but yeah, this one also a little short thing. But it was Leia getting extra training again. And I decided to include it because it carries on the theme with Leia of the season. Where throughout most of the season, she's felt like she hasn't gotten the training that she's uh, been expecting from Team Wetzka. And as you know, if you've been watching the series up to this point, I've been in full support of her. You know, sometimes a fighter is not comfortable with the training they're getting, and in the last episode of the episode before that, I forget which one, I apologise, um, none of the team were really happy with the training they were getting, because they weren't really getting a lot. They were just doing the same stuff over and over again. So yeah, it was actually quite nice to see that sort of little thing carried on, and it was Anderson de Silva who was holding the pads up, so yeah, just a uh, just little, little thing. And... Um, then we go back to Team Gastelum for their training session, and I already mentioned their prep. Um, I think this is a, a second training session, and they brought in a special guest coach in Elia Latifi, a light heavyweight prospect. Well, I say as a prospect, he's been around for a little while now. But in my opinion, he's one of the most underrated fighters. I really like Latifi, and I feel like he doesn't get a lot of credit for how good he is. But yeah, he is there, and he helps uh, sort of train them. And as they're doing drills, uh, he helps them with wrestling specifically. He helps them with some stuff against the corner, which is good because Macy's fighting Leia, who is predominantly uh, known as a wrestler. So it's very smart that he's teaching them about something he knows more about. So good that. That good. That good is that. Good, yes. Good. English. Bad. And uh, yeah, during the session, um, Panny, who I think is the other finalist. Uh, well, she's the first finalist. Um... Macy takes Panny down, and Panny looks at Macy and asks, Are you okay? I don't want to train with you if you're pissed off. And Macy was pissed off, so she sort of left, uh, went through the double doors, and sat on a uh, sat on a bunch of steps. And was she, she was letting it get to her head, and to most people, this would have seemed like whining or complaining, but you've got to remember, they're there for six weeks without a lot of access to the outside world, with the exception of cameras following them around, which reminds me of that joke in what we do in the shadows, which is a really good movie if you haven't seen it, but yeah. Um, she has the right to complain about being in the position she's in, and I have no doubt, you know, I, I have no doubt in my mind that she was feeling that way. I'm pretty sure I would too if I were trapped in a house with 15 strangers, and, well, 15 strangers, one of which I might have fought before, you know. But yeah, I, I'd probably feel the same way if I wasn't allowed to speak to the people I loved on the outside. 
So it's completely understandable that Macy felt that way, and I've got no problem with that. And she said herself, you know, like cutting, uh, trying to make the weight and training that in training that much in that short a, t a time frame. Sorry, I, my brain went bleh there. But yeah, training that much in such a short time and having to cut weight as well, that can also get to a fighter if they've got to do in such a short time. I think for her it's been like about two weeks, which seems like a lot of time to a layman who isn't a huge, you know, to a newbie of MMA as it were. But I've been watching it for like nearly 10 years now, sort of about that. So, yeah, like, well, I've, I've been watching it for 10 years. I've taken it more seriously for about four or three. But, yeah, it was, um, it was really, really, um, it was really sort of realistic. Something eerily realistic about seeing Maisie acting the way she was. But, once again, I completely understand the point of view and I don't really have anything about, uh, against it. And speaking of the weight, um, Leia came in at 145. She made the perfect weight. Macy came in at 146 and a quarter. And uh, I should point out beforehand, they did like a lot of things to help her lose the way, you know, they did that thing where they lay them in a bunch of towels and tried to get the sweat off. And there was a weird moment where Leia walked in to see what was happening. Uh, this is the only thing we've seen, like the weight loss sher sherry room, by the way. It's not the sauna. It wasn't the sauna. It was like a place in the actual house itself, not in the gym. And there was a weird moment where Leia walked in and sort of looked at her. And then for some reason, she took her shirt off. And I don't know why. Like, even Macy asks Marcel Allen that, and Marcel's like, yeah, I, I don't know either. And it was just, it was very, very strange, but it did help uh, Macy lose the weight, and it led to one of my favourite things that they do in the UFC, when it's like, oh, you weigh a bit too much. Okay, let me take my clothes off, get me a bunch of towels. And she did. And she weighed at 146, so... Good stuff. And I don't know why... I feel like it's always so reserved for certain points, but yeah, it's always been funny to me, for some weird reason. And the last one I have before the fight is called Barbecue. So what happens is, um, Team Gaslam, or Calvin Gaslam, takes his team up to a place called Jen's Korean Barbecue in Vegas, because that's where they are, obviously. And they all have a really, really good time, and I'll admit, I'm not a huge fan of sushi, but that's Japanese food. I really like how Korean Barbecue looks. I kind of want to try some. It just looks nice, and apparently it was really, really good, especially to uh, Justin Frazier, who hadn't had it before. Apparently he quite liked it, so, yeah, but, uh, there is another reason I bring this point up, but, well, I bring this part up, but I have a weird point here, because, like, just before this, we had Macy, like, struggling to lose her weight, and having a bit of a breakdown about that, uh, with the pressure of, like, fighting, like, again in such a short time frame and so on. So it was weird to go from, ah, she made the weight, that's good, it was, it was kind of dramatic, but it was good, to go from that to, like, oh, yeah, um, you know, Kel Kelvin's taking the, taking the team up to have Korean barbecue. Like, it was a, it was a little bit weird to me, but it was pretty funny. But then it turned inspirational, as Henry Cejudo, who had, at that point of the filming, I guess you could call it, had just won the UFC Flyweight Championship from Demetrius Johnson, Okay, I don't really, really hate it, but I feel like he shouldn't have won. Sorry. I like Henry, but, eh. But Henry, who, as we found out, is known for giving weirdly inspirational speeches, if his season against Mike Max Johnson was anything to go over a couple of years ago, he did um, say one very important thing. Like, he said, he sort of repeated this in weird, weird ways, much like I do on my videos, but the main thing he said is, you win or you learn. And he himself has said, I've, I've no worse life to lose because that helps me learn a bit more. And he relates his first fight to Mighty Mouse when he lost that. And I was like, actually, yeah, no, the dude's got a good point. I can't really, really fault that against him. So, yeah, it was a very, very good mindset for him to have and for him to teach these young fighters about. I thought that was really, really smart. So, yeah. It was cool. And, uh, don't really have a lot else to say about it, so we move on to the fight and... I technically sort of spoiled it earlier, but yeah, Macy is the winner. So, on the heavyweight side, we have Juan from Team Wetzka against Justin from Team Gaslam. I also forgot who it was. Uh, but for the women's featherweights, we have uh, both Gaslam members, because Panny and Macy are both from that team. Macy won by first round knockout, I guess you could call it. It wasn't technically a knockout, though, but it's sort of classified as one. I'll explain. So, fight starts, and... 
Uh, Leia actually executes her game plan well. She stays close to Macy. She tries to get all up in her grill and stuff. And, uh, yeah, she stays there and she keeps her distance well enough to stay away from Macy's strike. Because Macy has really, really good kicks. And, uh, which helps because she's four inches taller than Leia is. Like, Macy is five foot eleven. Almost dropped my phone. And Leia's five foot seven, so... You know, she had the reach advantage as well, did Macy, and it was really, really smart to see her using that when she could, but it was also smart to see Leia avoiding it. And then, Leia kind of made a mistake. She got a really, really good clinch, pushed Macy against the cage, did a little bit of damage, but Macy was definitely getting the better of it, and there's my cat sort of moving about a bit. And then Macy got a side headlock, got a trip, and took down uh, Leia, got some really, really good ground pounds, they both got up. And they stayed in clinch, and then Macy just pretty much went to town on Leia. She had, like, a Muay Thai plum clinch. That is the plum clinch. I almost I almost sort of thought it said prong clinch for some reason. That's, that was racist. But yeah, uh, she had a good plum clinch on her, and that's fun to say. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, so I just said the words plum clinch over and over again off screen, so I could try and get it in my system. I don't think it's worked, but yeah. Um, Macy had that plum clinch, sorry. And landed a bunch of brutal knees, and then that was sort of a break, but, and then landed a bunch more brutal knees, uh, all these, all knees, like, before and after, which of the body, and Leia went down from him, and it was really, really harsh looking. And, yeah, Macy won by knockout, essentially, from finishing it that way. And Leia was crying, and the part of the oxygen they were near was the part where, like, Dana was sat, like, around about that area. And she turns to him, and he says, I'm sorry, I know you've already given me a UFC contract, because he had. I don't know why I'm talking to Dana like he's that, but yeah, she said, she, she apologised, and didn't think she was good enough, and she feels ashamed for going down to that, and Dana said, it's really no worry, I've seen the toughest fighters I know go down from those things, and I'm like, yeah, that has actually happened, actually, yes, that has, and, I don't know, to see Leia sort of sad about it, I mean, that's understandable, but she almost made it to the finals, but she's on the card anyway, I think, so yeah, Macy won. And all in all for the finale, that's three for Gastelum, two of the same gender, uh, and technically weight class, and one for Team uh, Whitaker. So, yeah, that was, uh, that sort of ends the season, I guess. And all in all, I thought it was pretty good, pretty solid stuff. Like with previous seasons, I didn't really have anything against it, it's just, it's got like a solid formula now with the home video packages, I was getting to know the fighters a little bit more, I was getting to watch them. So... Yeah, it was uh, it was really really cool to see what unfolded, and I quite enjoyed it. And I hope this uh, the finale is as good, even though I won't be able to watch it because I need Sky Sports and we need to pay extra for Sky Sports. And fuck that noise. So yeah, that'll about do it. All in all, really really solid stuff. Not my favorite season, but it was enjoyable enough, and I wasn't bored a whole lot. I could have done without the Maurice drama for the most part. And I'm surprised there really wasn't any outbursts from him in this episode. Like, I don't think he spoke at all. I don't really remember if I saw him. Hmm. Weird. But yeah, that weirdness aside, still a good season. I still had fun, and not much else negative to say. My picks for winning are Justin, mostly because he surprised me a lot, and I look forward to being surprised by him again, and Macy. I don't have anything against Penny, but, uh, and I don't have anything against Juan, I mean, anyone could win. But I just like Macy a little bit more, I guess, I don't know. But yeah, um, I'll see you all probably soon for my top 10 albums of, actually no, go do Music of the Month first. They'll probably be out Sunday, because Saturday's got to be the next Fight of the Night review, if there is a Fight of the Night to speak of, so, yeah. Um, I'm making a lot of videos. Near the end of the year. It's gonna be Christmas soon. I really need life. Anyway, I'll see you all uh, for that. And until then, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.